this triangle actually makes two triangles. Now, did I just draw that so I could make this video? Or do these values actually provide us with two different triangles? And that's what I want to work through with you in this example, is actually going through a problem when we have two triangles, how to find all the missing cases. Now, indeed, this does actually have two triangles. And the reason being is because this side length is larger than the height, but then shorter to the adjacent side of the only angle that I'm given, which is 51 degrees. And we can kind of recognize this as if we kind of think about this as like a pivot on a door. And if I were to rotate that just around here, I'd probably have another triangle that would go just like that. So you can see that this 100 meters would just be here. So what we have here is actually two cases. We have the oblique triangle, the original triangle I showed you, and this obtuse oblique triangle. So how do we find all the missing parts for both of the triangles? Well, to do that, all we're simply going to do is create two different cases. And case number one is going to be the easiest one. That's just going to be using the law of signs. So let's go back to the original triangle that we had, and let's go ahead and use the law of signs to find the missing measures. It's important when we're dealing with a triangle that actually can be made into two different triangles, it's just to focus on one triangle at a time. So I know I can use the law of signs here because I have a angle and it's opposing side length. And then I have another side length. So I can create a ratio using the law of signs. I don't have any of this labeled. So I'm going to call this B and let's just call this one A. And then this is going to equal to a little B. So again, since I have this ratio of an angle with its opposing side length and another angle, which is our missing angle and its opposing side length, I can solve for this angle A. And I'm going to do that by setting up the ratio of the law of signs. Okay, and now to go ahead and solve for um, A, all I'm simply going to do is first multiply by 120 meters on both sides. And that's going to give me the sine of A is equal to 120 meters times the sine of 51 degrees all over 100 meters. Now to undo the sine, I have to use the sine inverse. Now here's where the two cases are going to come into play. But again, I'll talk about that here in just a second. So what I'm first going to do is type this in my calculator. So A equals 68.8398603. Now, typically I tell students to go ahead and store this. So simply what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, all right, A is going to equal a stored answer A. So if you're using any scientific calculator or graphing calculator, you can typically store this answer because we only want to round our answer at the very, very end. When we're doing calculations, we want to use the stored answer. But for the sake of our answer, it depends on what the problem is, but we can always go ahead and write this as like a rounded answer, like 68.84. You know, now let's go ahead and find out C. So we figured out A, right? Right? That was our stored answer A. But now what we need to do is figure out our value of C. Now, the important thing about knowing C is we already have two angles in a triangle. So we know that all the angles in a triangle add up to 180. So therefore, I can say B plus A plus C equals 180. Now, again, we already have A, which was our stored answer, right? So I'm going to use that. I have B, which was my 51 degrees. And then all I simply need to do now is now go ahead and solve for C. So what I'm going to do is just say C equals 180 degrees minus my stored answer A and then minus a 51 degrees. All right. So now I'll go ahead and plug it into my calculator to find my new answer of C. Okay, so C is equal to this, but again, just like I did for A, what I'm simply going to want to do is store this answer C in my calculator because we have to use this value one more time. And we're going to use that value to go ahead and use our law of signs because if we go back to our original problem here, if we now have my value of C, which is stored in my calculator, I need to be able to find the side length C. Again, I'm going to locate that relationship for the law of signs. But again, you can see now that I can still use my original ratio and now I can use a ratio of my angle C with my now missing value of side length C. So it's very important to store this value once you get it because we don't want to use rounded answers in our calculations. So now I'm going to go ahead and write our missing value C over the sign of stored answer C and that's going to be equal to again my opposing side. You want to use the original ratio for B. You could use A but let's just you know in case there was any kind of miscalculation I always like to go back to whatever values have been given to me. So I'm going to use my value of B and then that was going to be the sign of 51 degrees. Now to go ahead and solve for C I'm just going to multiply by the sign of stored C on both sides. So therefore I have C is equal to 100 times the sine of C all over the sine of 51 degrees. Now I just need to go ahead and plug this into my calculator to go ahead and solve. Okay, now it's very important that I, I rounded the final answer. I put it back in meters, right? Because that was going to be our units. And it's also important for me to make sense of this, right? If I got like one or two, like you want to make sense that works with the other side links. So this is 111.62 meters. And let's go and see, does that kind of make sense with my other sides? And yes, you can say 111.62 meters. That makes sense. So 
therefore, we have now solved for the missing two angles as well as our missing side of our triangle. But remember, guys, this was just case number one. We have to now go ahead and explore what happens if we had case number two. Okay, so here was our original triangle that we had. And again, remember, this was angle C, and this was going to be our angle A. But now, it's really important to recognize that the only angle that's fixed is B. 51 degrees, meaning this angle could kind of rotate here to be something smaller or to be something larger. Now, the 2K system comes because this actually can rotate this side length in to create this triangle that's going to be an obtuse triangle. So my A, instead of it being an acute angle, can now be an obtuse angle, right? But how does this work? And sometimes this gets students really kind of confused. They might visually see this, but they might be confused on like why that works or how that works. And the best way I can explain it to look at this is going to be on the unit circle. Remember when you type in the unit circle, the sine inverse, or when you just like type in the sine inverse of a value, remember the inverse sine function is restricted here between the first and the fourth quadrant, right? It's only going to give you angles in the first and fourth quadrant because we have to restrict the domain on the sine inverse. However, it's really important that for sine, if we're looking at like two angles, let's say like this angle and that angle, they both have the same y coordinates. So therefore the sine of those two angles are going to be the same. Now your calculator can't give you both of those answers. The calculator can only give you the one in the first quadrant, but there is also another angle angle, which is going to be obtuse. Now that other angle doesn't always work for our triangles, but it, it, but it does always exist based on the unit circle. It's just the calculator is only going to give you the acute angle. That's why we need to go ahead and test our second angle to make sure it makes sense. Now, again, sometimes that's not very apparent from the beginning. So let's kind of go back through a quick review on how to determine if you have two triangles and then how to find this value of A1. So the first thing I want you to get familiar with is finding your height, right? And it's really important to recognize if 100 is going to be shorter than the height, then no triangle is going to exist. If 100 is going to be larger than 120, well, then it's going to be like way over here, right? Only one triangle is going to exist because as I rotate this around, it's only going to make one triangle, which is going to be right there. But if this is right in the sweet spot where it can rotate in between, it's larger than the height, but it's less than 120 or less than that adjacent side, you can see how there's two triangles that can go ahead and be created. So what we simply want to do here is to determine this is we want to be able to figure out what the height is. I already know that this is going to be shorter than that, shorter than my adjacent side. So by looking at the height here, I recognize this to be a right triangle. Remember that's equal to 90 degrees. So therefore I can say the sine of 51 degrees is equal to my height over 120. Now to go ahead and solve for H, I just do 120 times sine of 51 degrees. Plugging it into my calculator, I get H equals a 93.25. So since this is larger, we know that a triangle is going to exist. But since this is less than 120, we have our two case system. So how do we find A1? Something important I want you to recognize here. These two angles are going to be exactly the same. So what that tells us then is if this is A, then that's A. And so therefore A1 and A are going to be what we call a linear pair. They are going to be adjacent. They're going to make up a line and they're also going to be supplementary. So I can say A plus A1 is equal to 180 degrees. If you remember from the first example, we stored our answer A. So we have everything we need here as far as to be able to identify what A1 is going to be. So when I want to solve for my new A1, all you're simply going to do once you find your value A is just subtract it from 180. So therefore I have A1 equals 180 degrees minus my stored answer A. That's going to come from the first case. Now to do that, I get an A1 is equal to 111 degrees 0.16014. Now again, we want that to be obtuse, right? That's the whole idea of what we're looking at in with this triangle. We have now a, an obtuse triangle or an obtuse, a, an obtuse oblique triangle. So this is going to be my A1. We know this is 51 degrees, right? That's my 120 and that's my 100. Now again, because we want to be able to find this missing angle, which is going to be C, we're going to want to store this angle. So that was my angle B, that's going to be little b, and this is going to be my big C. So now that I have my two angles, I just need to go ahead and subtract these two angles from 180 to be able to find C. But again, very important to go ahead and use your stored answer. Do not use a rounded value for your A1. And therefore, I get a 17.83986. Now again, this is going to be C1, right? I'm just going to call this my new C1 because obviously C was from the original triangle, which was a little bit bigger. And again, that should make sense. Like this angle should be smaller than which angle for C, which again, in this example was roughly around 60 degrees. So that makes sense. Okay. Now again, we need to use this for the law of sine. So lastly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and store this. So therefore that's going to be a stored C1. Okay. Now, and the last thing we need to be able to do is go ahead and find our missing side length C, right? So again, we have a relationship of a, our original angle and our missing side, and then we have our new opposing angle. And then for the missing side length. So all I'm simply going to do is just take C times the sine of stored C1, and that's going to equal to 100 all over the sine of 51 degrees, right? Now you could, again, you could also use A, A1 and A if you really wanted to, but I'm just going to focus on using
using this for C. So therefore to solve for C, I'm just going to multiply by sine of C1 on both sides. So that's going to give me 100 of sine of stored C1 divided by the sine of 51 degrees. And when I do that, I get a 39.42. Go ahead and round it. And again, that's going to be meters. Now, again, that should be much shorter than my original answer of C for my case number one. And if we go back to the original triangle that we had, we can see that the C for the larger triangle was 112. So yeah, it kind of makes sense that this would be roughly around like in the 30s. So that's an important thing I'd say for solving for the two case solution. First, just worry about case number one. Use your law of signs to find all the missing sides. Then if you determine that there is a second case, then all you need to do from that first angle you found, subtract from 180, and then go ahead and follow the same process again. But it's very important to make sure you are storing your answers and not using rounded answers. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. If you want more examples on solving using the ambiguous case or how to define the ambiguous case, go ahead and check out the playlist and resources I have for below or check out the next video I have for you here.